she's like, well, come on then, big balls, apply for it. <laughs> That's where it started. I applied for it. And then all of a sudden it was like, you're having the interview. And I'm like, oh, I think we're going on Shark Tank. <laughs> and I, I said, have we applied? <laughs> so that can work. And I just took one step towards him with my right hand and he stood up. So I realised I could sell, sell to him really easily, <laughs> uh, which was great. Sold him a jacket two sizes too small to him once as well, which was one, probably one of my best sales. And he went, uh, how often do you work out? Uh, I'm running home. If you want to try us and use this room, um, just give us a bit of notice. Let us know when you want to do it. Thanks for taking the time to sit, sit in and listen to our first ever event. Jack and Ryan along this morning to our lab breakfast from ISR training. Uh, we invited our clients along to hear about what local entrepreneurs are doing and what innovative things that they're working on. So we're really excited to have the guys here today and yeah, it'll be a great session. Okay, we'll get underway. Thanks for coming along everyone. Welcome along to another Virtuals Lab Breakfast. And, uh, we always welcome the opportunity to have local Gold Coast entrepreneurs along and sort of connect with them and you know hear about their stories. How did you two UK sort of lads end up here in Australia and ending up on the Shark Tank? For me, I was actually a mechanical maintenance engineer um, in the UK, believe it or not, dressed the way I do, um, for, for eight years and never sold anything before in my life. Certainly had all the preconceived misconceptions of salespeople, so no intentions of ever becoming a salesperson. I'm um, very much kind of in my comfort zone. There was just a little nag at the back of my mind thinking there's got to be more out there for me. So 2010, jumped on a plane, decided to leave everything behind, um, wound up here on the Gold Coast. Um, I just vibrate at a really high frequency. Um, I sleep probably four or five hours a, a night. The rest of the time I run around like the Tasmanian devil. Um, but I was politely asked to leave school and I started my own business. I started wholesaling confectionery from the United States when I was 14. And quite fortunate that uh, Jamie Oliver, the chef, had brought a petition into the UK where no products that were high in saturated fat or sugar could be sold in public school institutions anymore. And I started my own business and started wholesaling confectionery from the United States when I was 14. And, um, so I started a, a mobile tuck shop business where I had six mobile tuck shops and they would go to the front or the back of the major high schools in, in my city and we would sell you the chocolates and the cans of coke. <laughs> At 18 years of age I was quite fortunate, I'd saved up uh, decent amount of money and um, came over to see my big brother who was living on the Gold Coast. He said, come here, he'd nag me, nag me, nag me. Start a life with me in Australia, I did. Um, 17 days later he left. <laughs> I was just living the dream for a little while. I was working in Pack Fair, just in a bit of retail. And then this, this gentleman here who was um, a sales manager at a, a call center, for want of a better phrase at the time, kept coming in, spending an awful lot of money in my shop. So I realized I could sell, sell to him really easily, <laughs> uh, which was great. Sold him a jacket two sizes too small to him once as well, which was one, probably one of my best sales. And he went, he says, you got something about you. I reckon you could hit the phones. I reckon you'd be good at this. I said, nah, I don't want to do cold calling. No, I don't, has, has anybody cold called before? It's not fun, eh? Nah, it's, it's, it's not fun if you're not very good at it. Um, and that's what I realized very quickly. In the end, he did entice me over. $400 a week, 300 cold calls a day, 299 piss-offs a day, um, and uh, quite demoralizing to be honest. Um, and then I got right on my arse. Um, I was $2 to my name, living on a bathroom floor on Surf Parade in Broad Beach. Jack, need to have a word, mate. I think I'm gonna go back to the UK. And, and he just said to me, he says, you can, I don't mind you doing that, but you haven't truly tried to master this craft just yet. Um, and he asked me to, to take on board what we call the 60 day stretching program, which is 60 days straight of trying to educate yourself and immerse yourself into a new topic or, or piece of content. Um, and that content was sales. So I did, I started studying every single day for the next 60 days. Um, I had three months left on my working holiday visa. There was 21 salespeople in that room. Um, within five weeks, I was top salesperson in the whole company. <laughs> Are you recording? <laughs> it's just like, uh, how often do you work out? Uh, I'm running home. I'm running home. So my goal, three runs this week, so I'm going to run home. 
I don't want to use time as an excuse, so I'm going to run home today. That's all my goals for this week, yeah, yeah. to run three times. Yeah. Awesome. So it's 5k home, so I'll run. this have worked in a call center before, okay? Lots of fun, lots of rejection. But the reality is that most call centers, especially if they're doing lead generation or appointment setting as opposed to sales, is that they will, every single person will read the exact same script. But every single person will get a different result. And the reason being is it's not what they say, but how they are saying it. That is the real point of difference. Now, if you take nothing from this hour with me, let that be your takeaway. That nine tenths of your ability to influence or inspire another human being over the telephone has absolutely nothing to do with the words that you use. If you want to trial us and use this room, um, just give us a bit of notice, let us know when you want to do it. So on September the 21st, from 5pm till 7pm on Tuesday, we're going to be at the ISR boardroom and we're going to go through how to control your mindset in your later teens. You guys know that we we love learning, um, so I don't really know what to expect, so there's yeah. no pressure on. I think we don't either. So. Thanks for taking the time to sit, sit in and listen to our first ever event. My name is Michael and this is my partner Nikki, um, and together we founded Intuido. We aim to focus the majority of our attention towards the younger generation in educating them in what they're capable of doing, how their mind functions and understanding to shift their mind from one thought pattern to a more productive and outcome oriented one. So in order to settle, in order to live a life that you are capable of living and to use your full potential, you have to be strong in your qualities of mind and know what they are and know how to use them. Qualities of the mind that are really, really important to be strong in are, and they sound simple, but they go so much deeper when you start to study them. Um, faith, beliefs, thoughts, desire, imagination, suggestions, visualization and persistence. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about beliefs today. Take a look back at your beliefs on any area of life. Um, relationships, your beliefs on self-image, uh, confidence or for example money. Recap all your beliefs about money. Tell yourself what do I think about money? Um, it was generally negative beliefs about money. I, growing up what I sort of was around was money is not easy to get, um, you have to have a degree to get good money or ordinary people don't have lots and lots of money, um, things like money is only for your future, you should use it sparingly. So once you've recognised your beliefs, once you recognise what you think, ask yourself why do I believe this? You believe what your parents say because they're your parents, you believe what everyone else around you thinks, you believe what the media says, you just believe everything easier when you grow up and that's fair, that's understandable. So the good thing is where we are today is we have the power to use our mind to work for us because we have the power of choice. So we can right now choose what to think and what to believe. Yeah, so you are the only one pretty much has the power to accept a belief. Well, um, I, I was really interested in uh, Ryan and Jack's story um, and I'd seen them on the Shark Tank episode. Uh, so came to see if I could just uh, take a small slice of their knowledge away and um, even if I could learn you know, 1% of the skills that they have as salesmen, I think it could really help me in my business and in my profession. Um, and then so moving forward, you, you, the, you got the business going, there's some point in time you've sort of, uh, you, the Shark Tank thing's come. Where, where that's it starts is in my bedroom um, with my missus saying, me saying, oh, I'd smash this. <laughs> I'm laughing at the way they're presenting. And me saying, nah, nah, we don't want to go on there. <laughs> I'm laughing at the overvaluations. I'm getting upset about people's lack of understanding of their own business numbers. And I'm saying, I would kick this out of the park. Not only would I get full valuation, I said I would get all five offers and I would take a minimum of three of them with me. She's like, well, come on then, big balls, apply for it. <laughs> That's where it started, I applied for it. And then all of a sudden it was like, 
you're having the interview. And I'm like, I, I think we're going on Shark Tank. <laughs> and I, I said, have we applied? <laughs> yeah. It was never really about money. No. Um, picking up world-class mentorship mm. on how to scale nationally and internationally as effectively as possible. Um, and at one point, the three, um, Steve, Andrew and Glenn, are arguing amongst themselves because they don't want to collaborate. Um, so what you don't see is the negotiations back and forth. And so I've just had a bit of an epiphany with, with Glenn. Oh, I really don't want him in this deal. And at that point, he countered with, well, you know, could we take 10% each? And immediately I said, at the same valuation? He said, yeah. So that can work. And I just took one step towards him with my right hand and he stood up. What about 10% each? For the same valuation? Yeah. That works for me. So Steve and Glenn ha actually hadn't agreed, but it, we all just started walking and everybody was like, oh, we're done. Yeah, so very, very, very authoritative, very assumptive close, but um, I realized that they were in already. They were gonna take 10% each. They were gonna match the offer. They'd already come to that agreement. It was now about how could we work Andrew into the deal? And the second he'd found something that worked for him, we didn't check with the other two parties were they happy <laughs> yeah. to collaborate with him. I think also recognising, especially from, to give you guys a bit of value, in a negotiation situation, if you've got two, three, four, five people that you're actually sitting in front of and presenting to, you've got to find that alpha early doors. And it's very clear that Andrew's sitting right in the middle. He's the one leading the way. He's the one, when you walk in, introduce yourself. What's your yeah. business? What do you do? So, OK, you've got to start switch on to the fact that he's probably the, the one that the other two are going to respect. So when Jack's actually doing the talking or we're negotiating, we're firing most of the answers at him and then validating it back off the other two. Yeah. So then when, when he stands up and he goes, 10%, same value, yep, just walk straight forward, don't even look at the other two, and they will follow suit, and it worked a treat. Hi, I'm Jack Corbett, Managing Director and Co-Founder of ISR Training. It seems that you found us through Messenger. So Rapid five questions. Don't think, just answer it. Okay. All right. Name. Jack Corbett. Favourite colour? Head up to Brisbane, probably leave here around about 2, 2.30 before we hit trading hour. Um, get up there around about 3.30-ish, um, get all set up as per usual. Um, now, we've got an awful lot to cover over the next two, two and a half hours, so I'm going to keep my side of things really efficient for you guys so we can get into the content as quickly as possible. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no loving, that's fine. Fuck local radio stations, I got more plays than all of these revenues.